if I used your sample and you're on Beastars, you're getting 50%, you know? Um, and if you're not on Beastars, you should get on Beastars because you're losing bread. Beastars, the foundation, the precedence. We flying flags in every city, global residence. And we killing off the masters. Ghetto slave driving bastards. We making hits faster than you could think. We're on the brink of revolution. All my indie music makers, here's your restitution. Uh, we got the game in a chokehold. Not paying the creators is a no-no. I got the smoke road for all the fam bam. What's up, B-Stars fam? I'm A. Batchon, the host of the Pay the Creators podcast here on B-Stars. I've got a special guest. One of the top selling producers on Beat Stars, a producer based in LA, but originally from Reedley, California, um, who's worked with the likes of Russ and Joey Badass, some of my favorite artists. Um, Russ called this man a young legend. <laughs> that was a crazy. He don't. Day, he don't. He don't call many people that, and, no. and I couldn't agree more. Um, this guy's been making moves, in and out, of sessions, industry, online. Doing it all, my guy, Pilot Kid. <laughs> Welcome to Pay the Creators, bro. How you doing, brother? <laughs> oh, I got the reach a little bit. Yeah, man. Well, thanks. Doing, I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you being on the podcast, man. I had to come out to you. You know, L.A. I, yeah. yeah, you always on the move, man. I appreciate you. Not really, me. actually. I'd be staying at the house. Really, just working. Yeah. I feel like every time I I talk to you, like, wouldn't you? I usually come out and see you here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe that's what it is then. Yeah, man. my guy. We were we were talking a little bit backstage yeah. about um, just. Like you moving from from California, and yeah. this is kind of like you know born and raised out here. Yeah. Well, we can get into like w the reasons why, but uh, I'd love for you to kind of just like introduce yourself to the community, man, to the people. Give us a little bit of your your background, upbringing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'll, I'll look into this camera. <laughs> uh, my name is Pilot Kid uh, from Reedley, California. This is like forty five minutes outside of Fresno, if you know where that is, Central California. Um, and yeah, I, uh, been making music pretty much since 2015, I would say, but I was always involved in music. Um, I would say my first like encounters with music had to come with my older brother, seven years older than me, but he had like a rock band. I'm like, this is like the time when like screamo rock and like that whole thing was like really big. And like, I remember fallout boy was like one of the first bands I ever liked. And he had a drum set. So he would, like, show me little things and, like, it started with that. And then, like... How, how, how old were you when, when you were playing on the drum set? Uh, maybe, like, this is I uh, probably, like, fourth grade or, like, third grade. I don't even know. Yeah. I knew, like, yeah. one song, and it was, right. like, the easiest song you could play. Mm -hmm. And then fifth grade, probably, this is when I got into band. And I was a huge band geek all throughout school and high school. I played trombone. Um, got into guitar, like maybe around the same time as well so I, music was always something i loved you know like just growing up just i remember my brother had a uh the xbox 360 and he only had two albums on there one of them was one of those rock ones and the other one was a carter three and so all i could do is play uh gears of war and just run those two albums over and over and over again and then so through that i had my little library card and like my mom would take me to the library and this is back when like burning cds was still a thing so I would go and get like, see, like this is this is just me discovering music. Like, yeah. I used to, man, I used to. My grandma got me a clock radio one year, and like, my brother gave me some burnt CDs, and like, I would try to. I was not allowed to use a computer, so I would try to write out the lyrics. And like, I remember "Juicy" by Biggie. Like, I was just making up words. I was like, why would he say this? This doesn't make sense. But that music's always something that has spoken to me since a very young age. So I think I've always had it in my life. And then as I got into high schools, when I really started to like like the mixtape era, like mm -hmm. uh, Cush and Orange Juice and like yeah. Mac Miller dropping and all that stuff, is really when I started to fall in love with hip hop. But it was the J. Cole Power Trip video on YouTube where he's on the bus and he's talking mm -hmm. about how he made the beat. Up until that point, I really didn't give any credence to like what a producer is or anything right. like that. I just know I liked music and I saw him just do it like from mm -hmm. scratch. And mm -hmm. so I was like, damn, like, if he could do that with that, I could definitely do that. And so I got everything in that video. I got a, uh, when I graduated high school as a gift, my parents got me a MacBook for college. I got Logic because I was in the video, both of those things, and the same MIDI keyboard he had. And then it just started there. And so that's why I started making beats. And uh, 
Damn. Yeah. So J. Cole gave you the whole producer kit in that it video. Really, it really was that boy. <laughs> and I know it's not just me. I'm sure there's other people that are watching and be like, yeah, that was me too. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it was. Cool. that's really. I'm, I'm sure he, I'm sure he didn't even like really consciously think about like that he was doing that. No. Young people, like showing people on the production side. And you know what's crazy is like a lot of, a lot of artists, um, never really showed that side of them when they when they did production you know a lot yeah. of them would do production but they wouldn't like show that side of yeah. them and he was kind of like proud to do it yeah. you know um like one of the most like craziest stories right was like was it last year when when j cole hit up batman um on beastars Bro, so right? crazy i saw it the other day it's like at sitting at like seven million i think right now or eight million because that's still the only place you could listen to it unless you like grab the beat from him and told him to just drop it himself on, on his batman's channel. youtube channel on Bro, a, produ- set on a tight beat producer channel and he was already making j cole beats so like it's like now you got the stamp Oh, bro, it's like, it's wow. a rap, you know what I'm saying? So, Yo, and, shout out to Batman, bro. Yeah, shout out to Batman, <laughs> but, but shout, out, shout out to J. Cole. He did not have yeah. to do any of that. Yeah. Like, to just give an indie producer, like, a song. Like, mm-hmm. here, drop this, go ahead. Like, yeah. you can have this. Yeah, I mean, he produced. Who the fuck does that, bro? Like, that's crazy. But you got to respect it. Yeah, he seems like just one of those guys that just knows what it's like. I feel like I've been a J. Mm. Cole fan since, like, the warm up. So, like, just. He's a music nerd. See all that stuff and see, hear everything like that. I think a lot of people that are, like, in that mode that love J. Cole definitely see that. Yo, J. Cole, we got to get some of your beats on on Beastars, bro. Like, you got to. We got a lot of J. Cole type beats on the platform. (laughs) He made a a self care. I mean, yeah, self care by Mac. He's he's done. But, like, I feel like the stuff he produces, he just doesn't talk about. It's like, right. Secret yeah. lore, you got to go yeah. find out. <laughs> it's kind of like he puts on a producer hat when he wants to and yeah. just pretends like he's a producer. I think that's then, the most fire then, thing ever, bro. And then puts on the artist hat whenever yeah. he feels Tyler like Tyler does that, King Cruel, right. a lot of people. Right. That's yeah. dope. Yeah, I, I love I love when you work with an artist and they have a respect for like your craft. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And yeah. but a lot of a lot of artists when they first kind of like because out of necessity sometimes from affordability too, like back in the day. Artists used to have to figure out how to produce themselves because, yeah. like, man, like buying a that's beat. That's me. That's my story. I started yeah. off as an artist. Yeah. I was only started off producing for myself. And I think a big part of why I, no, I don't want to say figured out YouTube, but, like, for for a few years, I was, there was a point in time when I was producing for, like, a couple years and trying to do everything myself. And I would go on YouTube and see all these beats that are way better than myself. And so, back then, like, I would go on Beatstars, like, people i'm homies with now i'd be like i rapped over your beats and i bought those beats and like right. so i know like that whole game and what it what it like from an artist perspective what i was looking for mm. when i would click on the next video like so i think that definitely helped me getting into the whole youtube beat stars mm. thing you know because I, I definitely started off just being an artist and producing solely for myself right even when i put my first beats on youtube it was beats from my album that i was mm. producing for myself right right and uh that's dope yeah, I mean, it just it took off my my album. It's like up, up until this point, I'm getting like max. I think most I ever got was a thousand plays on SoundCloud, and even then, I was like, damn, like that was such a big milestone for me, right, a thousand right. plays. And then, I've 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 always said, and I've always talked to producers because I'm an artist. I, I write songs, right? Yeah. And I and I and I've I've always told them that having that songwriter component in your workflow, mm-hmm. like being able to be able to like really put a vision in place for a song even though you might not be performing it yourself or mm-hmm. you might not be putting it on your own album if you don't develop that part of your brain i'm sorry i don't think you can really sell beats at a, at a level that you really need to because yeah. like even though you said like okay i started out as a rapper don't feel like that it was out that that experience was ever wasted because no. You you still you still, still use coming. it. Yeah, no, you still use it. You still use <laughs> yeah, it when you're producing day. because if you don't understand a song format and understand like what arrangements like what how, how yeah. to change up every four bars when you need to change up every four bars to keep a song interesting. How to keep or, it simple the or beat tone simple. or yeah, like yeah. It, exactly creating the landscape for for a vocal because the vocal is an instrument and people don't really think of it like that. Yeah. So if you're just producing with never, never, really hearing a vocal on your track like i'm sorry i don't think you can make it i think that's such <laughs> like a, it's not gonna work that's such an important thing because i feel like there is I, I i run into like beats that i hear online that like sometimes i feel like people are confused like this sounds like it could be on any this this and that or whatever like that like it's up to par with like a beat from this album or this album whatever but like there's just something to be said about all my top selling beats you hear it and it's like 
it almost pulls something out Sample. of you. Like that's like the mm. that I feel like that's one of the biggest things I try to go for is like if is this like pulling something out of me, you know? Because it's like mm. that I, I think there's something to be said. Like as a producer, yeah. there's only so much you can do. Like to that's another thing about YouTube is like so you, you 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 have to sell yourself off of a beat with no vocals on it. Right. to somebody right. else and so right. it's like how, how are you gonna pull them yeah it's like if you really you just really it's really about being honest about that and being like mm. does this like you if, if i'm selling it to myself it's not gonna translate because i already got to sell it to somebody else you know what i mean it's like right right just being honest about that you have like a very like similar story to a lot of successful producers on beat stars mm -hmm. um is that you you come from a really small town mm -hmm. where you said you didn't really have any examples of like music production None other than watching a J. Cole video or watching your brother, you know, yeah. make music with his band, right? Yeah. Um, and so being exposed to like music production in general and from a small town, it's not really encouraged. It's not really something that's like available. It just you know? doesn't exist. It just doesn't exist. Yeah. And so sometimes I believe, this is what I believe, why so many dope producers come from these little small villages and towns all over the world mm -hmm. uh, on Beat Stars and they crack it big is because they're really put in a position where they're um, back against the wall, kind of like out of necessity, like exactly. out of necessity, like That's for you to connect, for you to connect with with other people, it had to be digitally. It had to be, yeah. you had to hack your way to kind of like, you know. It's my only choice. Connect, yeah, your only, only choice, option. right? I literally did everything. You could, I sent spam inst messages on Instagram. Like I like this yeah, funny. Like sometimes right. I'll have artists. I'll be I, from like uh like 2019. I've sent yo I fucked your beats or uh, I like your music this and yeah. that or whatever. Like right, I used to I, I've done everything like just from scratch right. zero at all online all digital and so but like that's I kind of feel bad do. for kids that grow up in cities like L A New York. Like I kind of feel bad yeah. for them yeah. because they feel like their their entry point into the game is a little bit convoluted uh -huh. with too much industry. Yeah. It's convoluted with Culture. too much too much industry where they're being fed a narrative on how to succeed. Yeah. On you know because that's just they're they're the talent pool in the local area. Yeah. And so I feel like people that grow up in big cities like LA and New York, I feel like they need to get out. Mm. They need to leave. They need to leave as soon as possible if yeah. you haven't made it yet because yeah. you need to you need to you need to tap into a whole different sense, like brain sense in a mm -hmm. way, like, you know, where you're not exercising the industry. You're not exercising, oh, I got to go to this club. I got to go to this studio. Mm -hmm. or I got to go to meet with this songwriter. I got to be part of this. You know what I'm saying? Where you're yeah. kind of like conforming to everyone else but yourself. Yeah. You're not conforming exactly. to anyone but yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was, I think, a big advantage for you. Agreed. And then coming here already with that, stability that foundation yeah where you're like you're looking at everyone else like <laughs> you guys you guys are doing this all I mean, wrong <laughs> i, I never knew about like the yeah. the politics and the industry right like things until i moved to la up until that point all the energy was that got me up to that place was this is so good if somebody heard it i know they would like this. Right. it was right. just like that adamance of like I love this. I know somebody else would love this. Like, there's just right. no way that, like, right? Yeah, it's just that under, like, that. that but necessity. that that energy, that, yeah. even me talking yeah. about it, like, that's right. like, it's been a commitment to that because it's just being online. It's, it's that much of more of an uphill battle that I could not lie to myself and be like, when you, I, when you first got here, yeah, were you, were you intimidated a little bit? Like, you didn't like, you know, coming from from a small For sure. town, were you yeah. intimidated a little bit? For sure, but felt like you felt like you you had to try to fit in somehow, some way. Definitely. Yeah. I think I did everything the wrong way a million times over, but it took me like learning. I think, um, yeah, that you, you, I mean, coming from like nothing exists. There's no, there's nothing where I'm from. There's a farm and we don't even got a Walmart, bro. We got a, one high school and like a 7 Eleven. Like you could drive by it, blink, and it's cracking, over, though. bro. I bet you that 7 Eleven's cracking. So when you hear, bro, that, so when you hear somebody talking about like, yo, I, I you, you walk to somebody's crib and they got, these records on the right, wall they're saying right. like oh i did this for this person it's like oh it's this is it it's different this now yeah. i'm on the other side of the tv screen i was like mm. this is it now it's mm. happening so you know i definitely was i would say naive when i first moved out here and just kind of believed everything mm -hmm. with everything but i <laughs> i mean i always i held on to the fact and that's the beautiful thing about b stars it's like well i got the music so like as long as i have this and have ownership mm. of this and i'm 
keep like everything else is like I can choose to lend this and lend yeah. it this way or whatever. But for sure, I, I had no, I I mean, I still don't even know really like industry stuff like that. Like I know right. what I know right. up until this point, but right. I'm definitely grateful for that. I've, I don't think I've ever even thought about that perspective until you brought it up right now. But once you, once you got here and you, you got rid of the intimidation, right? Yeah. And you got comfortable, you know, you found, you found your comfort zone here. A lot of produce, I, I, I was, um, yeah, I was talking to somebody just the other day, bro. Somebody called me and they're like, yeah, I'm moving to L I'm going to move to LA. You know, another, yeah. another one of our producers, I'm going to move to LA and I, you know, I'm gonna, all my friends, I found I have, I have some other producer friends out there. I'm going to start working on stuff. Yeah. And, and what would you say to that dude that is coming out here to kind of, figure out a way to establish themselves right yeah and avoid any of the the traps that are here because there are some great things yeah. about being in a city like this that has that much talent yeah that has that much creative energy yeah. like there's ways to navigate it uh -huh. but some people it, it takes a couple years before they they find out the real story in a way yeah i would just say like First of all, don't sign anything. Like that's one thing I very I never signed anything ever. There, I can't yeah, tell you. Don't sign that anything. The biggest beat that I had that we'll get into. I can't tell you how many different people tried to get me to sign it. How many like? Right. There's so much, pr but I knew once I signed this, there's no going back. But like so much pressure from like, hey, we have this opportunity. If you don't sign it by this day, it's gonna be gone. Then for some reason, another opportunity comes up. Hey, we still need this sign. I had lawyer like. What I would say to that mm. person is... Mm. So they were hitting you hard with... People were hitting you oh, hard with yeah. agreements oh, right yeah. away. Because I didn't know. Like, Holy you know what I'm saying? Shit, this is dude. one kid with this one beat that everybody loves. Right. And it's like, we want we that, that so we can, we you know? And so it's like, all I did was just not do anything. <laughs> you know, like... Right. That You're just like, I don't, I don't understand this. I'm just I'm not going to do it. signing because yeah. that's my leverage. That's gone. You know, know what I'm saying? I know. I, luckily, but a lot, I, of people, I, a lot of people fall into it, though. Yeah. They, so sign, I would they say sign just, away their best beat. Hold on to your leverage, bro. Like, you don't, yeah. you never know, like, what a beat could do for you or where it could go. You know what I'm saying? Because once it's gone, it's gone. Like, that's mm. it. Um, mm. But to that person that's, um, I would say, first of all, don't shy away from a big city. I think. Yeah there is a lot to be learned in big cities and like even just being around people and meeting other creative people right, like right that for some that's the best part that's there's nothing better for me than being in a room with somebody and i feel like oh my beats like these beats are ridiculous like right oh. i don't feel like that i don't feel like that that much these days but when i first got here i was like right. oh, i got to step my game up you know what i'm saying there's but talent. like there's without talent. Yeah, yeah 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 being in somewhere that like i'm cuz when i'm online and in my own little echo chamber yeah, like right. just my youtube with my audience my, they already like what i'm you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah. so it's really hard no to challenge. see but when you step into mm. a camp with all these other producers who playing these beats and it's like you play your beat and all the air gets sucked out of the room you're like oh yeah it's like oh i've had those moments bro I fuck but with those that. moments I made me that. go harder you know what yeah. i'm saying i wouldn't have a fire if i didn't have those cringe moments of like oh dude i gotta go so much harder you know that's dope so that's, that's dope. i think that's a big thing about what i had uh for like moving out here the uncomfort the uncomfort of yeah. like the humbling realization that your beats might not be that yeah. good bro <laughs> like, and that happens in big cities yeah. and where you come from, yeah. you know but yeah. uh yeah i would just say Steps do not up. sign anything and be wary of anybody that has i, I would say also say don't take anything personal because mm. um i definitely did that uh like oh, okay. in the beginning and like just like just coming from a small town i think people just are different in the way that they interact and like cordial in certain ways and like right, right. i think out here you'll get a lot of people that will say one thing and it's like nothing really exists if a better opportunity is there like everything else mm. is scratch. so i would just say like but don't take it personally because at the end of the day everybody's here to do what's best for them you know right. so just like that's for sure just understand that and just like right Right. You know, but like, there's also like so many great people. I've met so, so many great people. Like the the horror stories I have are just like few and far between. Uh, they but, do exist, but, but you needed them though. They, yeah, but I needed them exactly. Yeah, but you yeah. needed those. A lot of producers would would come into a situation like you said, where they had a humbling realization where their beats were not as good yeah. as they thought it was, and they probably pack up and go home, go back to their little town. Yeah, you know. But you chose not to. You you kind of you chose to you know push through and step it up yourself you yeah. know so i'm just curious like being in a session like that where you're with a bunch of producers and you're like okay i, I need, really need to step myself up how long did it take for you to 
after you've kind of elevated, figured out, elevated your craft, you'd be like, okay, I'm ready for this next that session. That night, I'll tell oh, you exactly night. the exact day it happened. <laughs> I was in a, I was in a Bryson Tiller camp a couple years ago. His manager was in there. We all had like three or four beats to play. Mm-hmm. I saw the reactions for the other beats. I saw the reactions for my beats. There were still like a few more days in the camp. Oh my, that feeling was just like, oh, there's my opportunity. It's just like walked out the door. That's what it felt. I don't know what this man was thinking. He probably didn't even know. care. Like, yeah, you're overthinking that's how it. I felt. Usually artists are not going to tell you anyway. Yeah, what, right. it probably wasn't that big of a deal. Right. But I went home. I was making, I, I knew where the bar was at. I was up till like maybe five, six in the morning. Right. Came back the next day. Well, I played him for our A and R guy who was like moving things around the camp. And he was like, "When'd you make this?" I was like, "Last." I was. I said this morning, and he was like, "I could tell." Like he was like, and that and that. You know, oh, I don't so know whatever happened. The next I can't, day, yes. The next day. Well, what am I? Gonna, you know, it made me better. And like that, the bar the was raised. Right. And it's right. like at the end of the day, this is an industry, and you're competing to be. For me, at least, to push music forward and to, if you're not like, you got to look at the greater music industry as competition. Like, you're in the league. Like, I'm here to compete. I'm here to, like, speak through my sound. And if I'm not anything that is extraordinary, why is anybody going to take their time to listen? But what's dope about, I think, what, the Beastars platform has done for I feel like for the music industry because you know like collaboration splits and all that stuff that yeah. stuff never existed until Beastars yeah. did it right yeah when we took away the the awkwardness of the funny money kind of situation mm-hmm. where you can just easily collab and split money mm-hmm. and not have to worry about like feelings and like oh yo this person owes me a hundred dollars for this track mm-hmm. or that it opened up the doors for where you're still competing for yourself but you're like you know what I can compete with other people together with yeah. me now. Like I can, I can like Voltron, like I can yeah. connect with other, other people. The- and, and it's, and it's like, it's competition, but you're kind of like all on the same hundred path in a way. For you know a long, I mean? for a long time, you know? Stoic was like, mm. he was making the same type of beats as me. And he was like, oh shit, a, he was like six months ahead of me in career trajectory. Ooh, and that was always okay. like my okay. op. I was like, I got to get this guy. Like, <laughs> well, you dropped a beat. Nah, I'm gonna come harder. Like, Whatever, whatever. And then one day I was just like, why don't I just reach out to this man? And now we're like best friends. Like, Did you reach out? You were were the one who initiated it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Turns out he knew who I was. But I'm saying like to go off of your point. I love that. that that, That's a perfect example of another Beastars person that I met from doing the same thing. He's dope. It was the competitive thing, but then when I switched it to let's... You know, now we Man, we're, that's we're, so you know, sick. Dog. And there's so many stories like that. Because you know happened. what? In the industry, that would have been a negative situation. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, if it was just an industry situation, you know, where there was no online um, ability to br- break mm-hmm. bread together, mm-hmm. do things together. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it would have been just like, every time you see him, it's, it's uh, he's an op. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. And there wouldn't have been any room for... Cause, yeah. Because no one was trying to share publishing back in the day. Yeah. No one was trying to, like, you know... You know, like there was mm-hmm. never like, no, no, this is my connect. So I, you don't need publishing on this one. You're, I'm putting you on. Yeah. That's how it was back in the day, bro. Still like that now. No, I know. <laughs> but I'm saying like, you know, like it, not as much as it used to be yeah, probably, yeah. right? You guys can demand a lot more yeah. now. And no matter how the collab That's happened, true. no matter how the collab happened, you can still demand your ownership, still demand things. Back in the day, it didn't happen. Yeah. If another, if a bigger producer puts you on back in the day, bro, huh? you might not even be in the credits, dog. Exactly. You, you might have produced the whole thing. You might have produced the whole thing, and 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 and, and that dude takes full credit for producing yeah. it. That's how it offers, used to be. I've had offers like that. For That's people. how it used to be. Bigger producer be like, "Yo, be pretty, be the ghost producer for this." Yeah. No, I'm not doing that. Right, no. but that's how it used to be. Yeah. So, the, so the blessing of you being able to be like, you know what, dude, man, I can't keep competing with this guy yeah. in the same in the same like universe of beats. Let me just let me just like connect <laughs> yeah. with him, dude. Yeah. And it's turned, and it, so you said it like it's, it's turned into a great, great We're I mean, like the closest homies. I'm moving. Right. That's he's like one of the main reasons that I'm moving to New York is like because wow. from there and like through meeting him and I got to see the city and fall in love with the city and everything like that. So yeah, like lifetime. I get all of my closest homies right now. Like I think about it right now, they all came from Beat Stars. They all came from. Uh, we do the same thing. None of us are from the same area. I got a homie from Florida. Got a homies from Toronto. Homie from New York, Baltimore. None of us, but somehow we, Chicago. 
we all find time to just and it's like you know like we're like lifelong friends but yeah shout out to the internet <laughs> hell yeah do you still do you still put up a lot of collabs on your on your platform when you when you drop these time. yeah okay time, so you're yeah. so you're still actively like collabing with producers yeah if you, if you if i used your sample and you're on beat stars uh-huh. you're getting 50% you Amazing. know Amazing. um and if you're not on beat stars you should get on beat stars cuz you're losing bread you right know? so that's always how i've like to approach things with like i know some people are weird about percentages yeah. and like yeah. i got a i got a big youtube so you only get 50 like right whatever dude like you know, you're all like, just helping each other really man at the yeah. end of the day you're just you know the the artists don't care like we don't care yeah like when we're browsing through beats you know what i'm saying yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. i don't care how it got up there yeah. you know what i mean if it if it if it touches my soul and if it fits like the thing that I'm trying to work on at that specific moment, I really don't care how yeah. you got the sample, who you collab with. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that consistency of being able to drop shit on your platform, mm -hmm. it, may, it may never get discovered. And sometimes you go, you know, like, you know, you need inspiration from other people, yeah, like, you know, just to get over the hill. Sometimes my collabs that are not on my YouTube have gone up on Stoic's channel or on Eerie Sky's channel. Right. And like, Damn there's opportunities that would have not happened without collabs from other people you know like at the same time it's your collab yes but it's also their collab for their right. people they're pushing bringing it two worlds together hell yeah you know and there's like a lot of the times like i have several beats where they have bigger channels than i do and all the sales come from that you know mm -hmm. it's like that if it wasn't for the collab like you know what i'm saying there's so many people i could think of like that it's the truth you're sharing audiences and if you make similar music that audience is gonna like your music. You yeah. guys are gonna swap audiences, so it's mm -hmm. like you you get more fans and you just more yeah. variety for the artist to have. Um, yeah. You get to spread the work out too. I mm -hmm. think of like yeah. sticking to a consistent upload right. schedule. If you're collabing with people, that's yeah. like, oh, you get to I may I did this, but like you can finish up this beat now. I can move on to other things, and I you know it's kind of like a collaborative. Like, yes, you know. yes, bro. The most the most savvy business people understand that. Like mm -hmm. having diversity of products and having like, you know, having different SKUs in your mm -hmm. store, right? Like being able to provide um a variety of like sounds and music mm -hmm. um to a customer base that's the internet where millions of people are listening to your shit. You literally have millions of people listening to your stuff on YouTube and B stars, bro. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Crazy. How are you going to feed all of them what they yeah. want? And when you when you when you talk about like pulling pulling people into um a song or a beat you were you were saying you said something in the, in the studio you're like man i didn't get the reaction i wanted i didn't i, well, I, I was thinking in my head i wasn't getting the reaction mm -hmm. from that artist and i will tell you know like you got to tell and you're an artist too bro yeah. like you can't force an artist to write to a to a track no. like there there is a time place emotion subject yeah. when an artist listens to a beat they know yeah. when it's time to write and it it doesn't mean your beat is bad. It doesn't yeah. mean your track is terrible. Exactly. It's just that moment in time, the inspiration that that's that that sparked at that moment may not be fit for that for that track. Exactly. So it's like like you said, don't take it personal. I don't also take it think personal. if you have a strong enough sound, you can mm. just create that instantly. Like alchemize that vibe. Like I wasn't even on this, but I heard it. I can tell you how many times that happens. Like I've never made a song like this before, but this is just potent enough that like I'm on this now, you know what I'm saying? But to that point, I think that's like a big thing that I try to push about like chasing placements and stuff like that. It's like so much of it is out of your control. Like every factor you just described, it's like there's so many things going on. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like- you can't control it. That's what's amazing about YouTube and Beastars. You can control that, you know? that's mm -hmm. You got this going on. There's so many things going on in the ether that like for a song to land. Really, it's magic, really, right? It's a numbers game at the end of yeah. the day. So it's like- if you're worried about the the reaction in the studio, then play the numbers game online. Get in front yeah. of thousands of people. You, so one person will like your shit. And yeah, <laughs> buy it. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah. Yo, let's talk about your creative process a little bit. I'm just curious to like, how do you approach making a beat? Do you start? Because you said you play drums. Like, do you start with drums first? Do you do sample? Like, I actually just started doing drums like first because I never. I'm always a sample guy first because I have a. I tend to make more melodic things, so I have like that ear for melodic stuff. Me personally, I just that's what I like to create. Um, but really, it just. I mean, it just it's. It's such a hard. Let me see. Let me think. A lot of the times, I'm thinking about what it's just like going in there and getting in the flow and just whether that's a sample i hear or I, I like start with the drum like usually if i have absolutely nothing 
I'll start with some kind of drum pattern, some sort of thing, and then I'll like maybe put samples over it or play something over it or something like that. It's really just getting in the flow of things. There are times when I'm inspired. I feel like if I were to drop examples of that, it's not really accurate because those are few and far in between where I'm actually like, I'm inspired to make this. A lot of the times it's just going in there and trying to make something crazy and just tweaking it around and not knowing what I'm going to make a lot of the times is what helps me out a lot, I think. Not, I think... The only times I ever get beat block is if I'm like, I need to make a pack for this artist and uh, this type of things. Cause right. then Pressure the bar is, I'm never going to reach that. So mm -hmm. like, it's like, mm -hmm. I'll spend way too long and overthink everything. If I'm just ideally in like, a, let me just make something that I feel mm -hmm. whatever I'm feeling mm -hmm. that day, whatever. I, that's the easiest thing to tap into all the time is however I'm feeling inside. And yeah. I think I have like a good ability of being able to, like I said, as a producer, I don't have, um, words to say how i feel express myself this is art at the end of the day so i do that with sound and so that might be a certain chord progression or it might be a sample mm. or it might be piano it might be a genre it might be all kinds of things but it all i think it all goes back to the way i'm feeling at that time yeah yeah who, who are some like um i guess some like musical inspirations for yourself like when you you know, when yeah. you first, I guess when you first started creating, and and, and maybe some now, like who, yeah. how do you how do you keep you know keep staying inspired to make music and and evolve? You know, I think so. Some of my favorites coming up was like Kanye, mm -hmm. Tyler, uh, Tame Impala, Childish Gambino, uh, Drake. You know, have a lot of jazz stuff, Kendrick. Mm -hmm. But I think what really did it for me is the songs that really spoke to me, the cult classics like The Runaways and the 90210s and the Sing About Me's, you know, those real mm -hmm. like deep mm -hmm. cuts that people like yeah. love that like this song speaks to me. I think a lot of my inspiration comes from being able to make songs and beats like that. Like that's all my uh, inspiration, even for making music started with is like hearing songs that like just like, you know when you hear yeah. music that you just that just speaks to you like in more yeah. than any movie or yeah. like person anything it's just like this is just hitting right now I, that can, feeling. I, I can hear a i can hear a lot of kendrick yeah uh, influences on your stuff like i'm i'm surprised he hasn't like got on one of your tracks I'm surprised yet. too i mean maybe maybe it's out there somewhere he sounds perfect on he would sound like great uh, it's a rap it's i want to get into a couple happens. couple tracks that have like hit off off your off your store yeah um one one of them is uh lucy i'm gonna pull yep. up i'm gonna pull up a couple tracks classic and and then this this uh, one from this last you know last nine to ten months yeah salvation yeah um these two tracks are really interesting to me and completely different vibes by the completely way completely different vibes <laughs> different time periods and i just kind of want to hear you like break down why this song why this beat did what it did um this one's your top selling beat lucy, lucy. yeah yeah yeah, honestly, this is a funny story. This is one of those beats that... Should we play it first? Yeah, play it. Let's play it. This beat. I could not escape this beat for... It, you couldn't escape it? Bro, I was hearing this beat everywhere. When this was first going up for like a year, I could not escape this beat everywhere. Bro. <laughs> like, crazy. What were, the, what were the type of songs people were making on this one that you, you've heard that... Like Tame Impala kind of stuff, yeah. like real. I mean, it just feels good, you know. Like it's just like dancing, kind of like. Uh, it's interesting to hear how other people like to hear different versions of a song. Like, it's so crazy. But uh, did you play this one? It seems like see, this seems all original, no samples. This doesn't sound. This like... This has some samples in it. It does, huh? Yeah, yeah. Like, I I uh, added guitar, bass. It's like a lot of the weird thing. That's a sample. Okay. Like some uh, weird little. It's like some that. Russian, uh, like library music from the seventies. Whoa! Like super, super obscure. Interesting. I don't even think it has a thousand plays on YouTube. I wouldn't think this would be your top selling beat. I'll be honest with you. I, I definitely did not. I didn't think that either. Up until this point, I was making like Kanye beats and stuff like that. If you go to this beat and on I wonder, YouTube, like what audience this hit. I don't know. The the pinned comment says, I don't know if you all are going to like. I needed an upload. I was in Hawaii on vacation. Uh -huh. And like I was, my upload schedule was every other day and I needed one. This was just one of those ones where I was like, I don't know, but whatever. I'm going to just put it up there. If it flops, it flops. Didn't flop. 
went crazy. And there's not really like a defined chorus, really, like. No. Interesting, man. Yeah. I think I'm, the whole you know, timestamp thing. People yeah. ask me for timestamps now. I don't know when that started. I think that's a little overrated too. Cause I'm like, bro, don't. I'm not gonna sit here. Do you want me to make the song for you no. too? Like, no, dude. chop it up, do whatever you want, bro. Like, right, you know. Right. But but that just shows to tell you that you never know. You don't know which track is gonna no. take off. No, because for know. all that things that I said about trying as hard as I could to be extraordinary, that's one of the ones where I had completely no idea that it was gonna do what it did. But yeah, I, I mean, there's. I don't think there was a lot of beats like that on YouTube at the time. I think it sounds very unique. Um, you sold like hundreds of, if not thousands, of licenses for this one. Yeah, that's uh, that one's up there, man. That one's up, still up there, still selling. Yeah, still selling. Yeah, yeah. I'll that's sell dope. probably sell a few a week. Probably. Damn, dude. Yeah, that, that's. But you know, if I would have if I would have signed those contracts back then, you know. Who and knows? it's dope that it's been four years and you haven't sold it exclusively. So it's no. still a catalog earner for you. Like mm -hmm. it still earns revenue. Mm -hmm. um, and it could still, somebody could take that song tomorrow and it could go viral. And t like who knows what could happen. You know what I'm saying? Like that, it has life still. Mm, you know still what I'm has saying? life. For, Good music always has life no matter what. Exactly. If For as many licenses as it's sold and I've always just felt that like, a good song none of that matters a good song is just gonna like boom that's gonna be like oh this is the beat for this song you know so right, it's like right yeah that's 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 one of those ones i'm gonna play another one yeah salvation which yeah. this one you couldn't escape it if you were on b stars this last year you couldn't escape this one really i felt like i heard this thing a million yeah. times dude because of that one because of that <laughs> This is one of those feeling ones. Yeah, I have this saying of like, if you if you if you're hearing, I gotta music, be honest. I wrote to this. Yeah, I have. Good. I have, oh, you gotta show I have me like, that. Uh, I have a couple verses on this. But I haven't dropped it yet. Fire, <laughs> fire. Yeah, this is. It's special. It's special, bro. It's emotional. It's just like my thing with making beats is like if I like to think if you're. If your if your attention is elsewhere other than the music, that's a sign of like like when I'm listening to this, it's hard it's hard for me to even speak right now because I'm like listening to this at the same right, time. It's like, yeah, mm. yeah, that right there, the yeah, yeah, those drums and the the next part, I played guitar on it and like did the whole yeah yeah. This is one of those ones where I was like special. walking when, around my what, room. Yeah, what were you? What were you, what what happened that day? I think this is on the other side of me feeling what I was told you earlier of like just feeling like I was kind of like in a drier season creatively and just yeah. like I was just looking for something I can't something special like that's all I'm ever looking for but that time I really was just like it's undeniable like something just like really pulls you did that's, you just hear that vocal sample yeah. some first and I was yeah. like okay I'm start with that yeah I just I heard it I just knew that like yeah, built around it. Had a drums, bass, that guitar earlier. Yeah, man. Yeah. This is a beautiful beat. Like, Thanks, man. This is this is one of those like, you know, it's like pieces of music, man. Like, you know, it's it it captures a moment in time for people as an artist, yeah. someone that's going through something. Like, I I wrote I wrote a bunch I wrote about my kids in this one. Wow. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just that's amazing. Sometimes you know, being distant from from oh. my, my oldest just being separated from him not yeah. seeing him he's in college he's you know he's away and you know so Damn. it's like it yeah like it doesn't that matter. just paid that you, you just know? gave me a perspective on that that i didn't have prior mm -hmm. to you saying that so now mm -hmm. i Anytime I hear that now, I'm gonna think of that I'd be like, damn. There's also stories, this longing, and this like, all these different emotions. Yeah. Like, yep. Longing. Wow, that's beautiful. Yep. Thanks yep. for sharing that, man. Yeah, man. So, okay. I mean, that you know, you help you guys. You guys really help people. You know, this shit is therapy, man. It goes back to what I was saying earlier about the runaways and the thing about me's mm -hmm. and those deep cuts oh, that runaways, really speak runaways, to people. Yeah. Like, I can hear that. Inspiring. I'm always trying to. That's my bar. Mm -hmm. Like off of the last. Uh, Russ album Oasis one of the songs that I produced mm -hmm. it's interesting that a lot of the beats and sounds that I make lend themselves to just introspective writing I think like you said that you hear a lot of Kendrick influence Kendrick is very introspective yes and so it's funny that mm. the song that he made Oasis on that like the beat I don't know obviously I don't know what he's gonna write but he he made a deep cut and he made 
he he made a song that he really connected with. He's like because of this beat, like I was able to go in and like write about some real things that I was going through at the time, and like that for me, that was all that mattered to me. Is I made a song that was therapy for him and for other people that'd be like, right. yo, like what you're talking about in this song. I was just going through like that's that's it. That's all right. I care about right. is that that ther- that therapy that you're talking it's about. Real, that man. that's it. Yeah. Sometimes we, we just, you know, artists, we just write music, not, not knowing like what audience is going to hit, like it's going to hit. And we're yeah. just, just releasing energy that we need to release because it's exactly. bottling up inside, you know? I think that's the yeah. best things that can, that I feel like you can tell when music is where, where the intention is, where it came from. You can tell mm. when somebody had fun making a Depends song. Depends on the artist sometimes, right? Yeah. Sometimes you could tell this is too orchestrated or you were yeah. trying too much to do this. Sometimes you could tell like. This is just so organic and like, yeah, I think there's a lot to be said about. It's hard to be to right. dig deep and go For into that. For sure, you gotta stuff. be vulnerable. You gotta be, yeah. you know, gotta and be you don't gotta to do it all the time. You know, I love making mm, yeah. hype shit too, but like, yep, I think that's that's a well that's never gonna go dry. Mm-hmm. Is that sure. however you feel inside? Sure. So. Yeah, like when you when people talk about, oh man, all here is the same thing over and yeah. over. It's like artists are not just they're not tapping enough into their like real life experiences enough to make something original i think a a lot of that comes from you see a uh formula that worked Mm. so it's safe it's like well at least it's not if it hits to this line right i mean the 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 highest it's ever going to go is what it's trying to emulate yeah it's never going to go higher than that because that already exists but it's safe because as long as it sounds like this i know this worked should work right? right So yeah, like like you were saying, like it's a, it's it's a sport. There's there's artists that approach the game, like you said. It's just, I'll, I'll find a safe zone just to kind of mm-hmm. make it right and mm-hmm. kind of provide a dumbed down version of music mm-hmm. just to just to feed a certain demographic audience. And then you got people like like a J Cole that it's a sport. I'm gonna try mm-hmm. to outwrap you. I'm gonna try to write the best song, mm-hmm. or like a Kendrick, where it's mm-hmm. like I'm gonna try to hit you with the most real emotional stuff that I can hit you mm-hmm. with the real life. T- so there's Different ways to approach it. You yeah. you produced um, a bunch of songs for Russ. Yeah. And I want to get into how that happened. Yeah. But this song I want to listen to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then you got to tell us how this shit came, came together. This is... this is a banger. This is probably the 70th beat I sent in the group chat. Like, this is after a year of me sending beats in a group chat that Russ is in. And it was just like the next day he sent it back. Yo, this is crazy. Here you go. You never know. This is like on the other side of so many other beats that I sent. So, you just, you don't know. Never know. Never know. I didn't know it was going to be this one. I knew it was fine. I think they're all, I think it's going to be everyone, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They were giving. Mm. I feel like he doesn't have a lot of songs like this too nah. like on beats like this yeah like just snap and just talk yeah shout out to Elkin <laughs> he went off dude <laughs> yeah they did that video uh, Paris Fashion Week I feel like even Russ I think a lot of people don't don't talk about this a lot um I feel like he went through like an identity crisis a little mm-hmm. bit when he first came in the game. He got a lot of fame real, real fast mm-hmm. early in the game, and I felt like he was trying to fit into yeah. the Atlanta industry. Yeah. Like he was trying to be one, you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I and mean, then, and then I feel like the last two or three years, he's really found his um, his audience. He's really talking to his his his, yeah. his his his. He's like representing like you know independent music yeah. and. Um, collaborating with a lot of independent producers yeah. and like vi- taking energy from you guys and being open to not trying to just fit in, but create his own, create yeah. his own like way of making music. You know what I mean? Yeah. He goes, he goes into that um, entirely on the whole last album, Santiago that we made, which oh, is yeah. Yeah. exclusively made by producers from, I'm pretty, yeah, they're all on beat stars. Odd status is, uh, Dang. we met Russ. Why well, didn't meet um, the founders, Chase Bank, Prod Tide, uh-huh. both B-Stars guys. The Chase used to live next door to Milan for like two years, bugging him over and over again. Milan, Russ's manager. Mm. Yo, yo, yo. We got beats. We got beats. We got beats. We got beats. Finally, this one day, Milan tells Russ. Russ is like, fly these kids out. We went for three days, played them beats. He was, he was working on an album at the time. 
he's like he just told he's like yeah i'm scrapping everything we're gonna fly you guys back out we're gonna we're gonna make an album damn dude that's just dope. like that everybody from all over like nobody was from we got people from and chase bank was kind of like the connect the, the yeah, new, yeah, original yeah, connector yeah. for all of it yep and, and so who, who who were some of the, who are all those producers do you remember all the names so odd status that trip status. was me myself lucas quinn lucas quinn broke boy broke boy <laughs> chase bank prod tide and morrow i think that's it was dilly, dilly came in dilly, after dilly uh, Damn. Am I missing anybody? Like internet, internet all stars, man. Yeah, <laughs> all, 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 all beat, all beat stars, guys. You know, Amazing. but that's how that's how we met. That's how we created that collective. Was we were all oh, like okay. peers on you on a, and you guys all looked out for each other on that project, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Damn. just all of us. And what was that? What was that experience like? He flew you out. Where did you guys go to? We so we stayed in an Airbnb, uh, like a f like thirty minutes from his crib and every other night because well it had to be every other night so for like a month and a half i was in atlanta i was in atlanta okay every other day we would go to his house sometimes at, like sessions would start at 11 p.m midnight he's he was a night owl at this time so we would go cook up or he would tell us what he was on that day mm. and then he would record over beats he had from the from prior or whatever uh-huh after like three or four hours, we would just be at his house making beats like all over the house. He had instruments, all kinds of things, just there at his crib. Crazy. The other night, play show and tell, and then he would hear stuff. And then we had like the system going, and there's all kinds of stories in between of ping pong matches and basketball <laughs> stuff. Like there was a whole bonding that went on during oh. that entire time. But yeah, it was just. Uh, he must have been intentional about that, though, like to create that environment for you guys to be. You know, kind of like this brotherhood of producers. Yeah. To just like get out of your comfort zone, get into this house. Yeah. And he and he had it. He had it like formatted in a way yeah. where there was there was a schedule. Yeah. There was like there was this was not a game. Like yeah. we're working on a big album for a big artist. He pushed us. He he uh, he told us, you know, I can't promise what this album will do, but I can promise you that people will hear this. People will hear your music. And he, he was he 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 played us beat packs from all the major. That was a big moment for me. I'm not gonna say who he played packs from, but uh -huh. that was a big moment in my career where he we we got to listen to some of these packs from uh, some of the biggest producers in the game. Mm. And I was like, that's it, that's all it that's takes. All I got. That, ever since that day, I was yeah. like, oh, this is it. Like, yeah, we're, we're here. You know what I'm saying? So he that. did he did a lot, bro. Like he. He, he I, I can't thank Russ enough for that whole entire experience and just him putting us on game. I think he saw a bunch of young, young, hungry producers, and he, I mean, he knows what that's like and coming mm -hmm. up and everything. I think mm -hmm. he just fed off of that, and we had a whole thing going, and yeah, it was just, man, it was that was such a time. He's another guy that used to make beats too, right? Like I felt like yeah, he used to still produce does. as well. He still still does. Yeah, uh, in the dirt, but it was like second to last single that he dropped. That was him. Got he it. still does Got all it. the time. Yeah. Got it. And that. Santiago album was like that was like an acclaimed Russ album. I felt like the internet went crazy for that yeah. one, dude. Like out of all of, all of his projects, I felt like that was the one that was getting so much visibility everywhere. Yeah, it I had think, so much press. Yeah, like you know what I mean. That that was his. He used to say he's like, I'm trying to make some. I'm trying to make something better than my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Mm. That was the bar for Russ. Damn. And so every like that's he would he would tell us that all the time. He's like, I'm trying to make the greatest album ever. Like, that was the energy he was on. So you know, it it kept us all like pushing the bar high. And like, same thing with the show and tell every night. If mm. he picked this guy, if he picked like three of Lucas's beats and none of mine. The next day, oh hell no, Lucas! Like that's my boy, but nah, dude. Okay, the heck no. okay. Like, so you guys were competing whole, with each other too? Yeah, because like he's he's. I mean, at least I was. If yeah, he's not you had to be. Me, they all like, were. You're talking they about an were. album Come that you're on. trying to get Everyone's on. Everyone's trying to get on that album. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So that's, that's sick. another like. I wonder if he'd do that again. I wonder if he did. You, did he film that whole? Yeah. Oh, he filmed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's got to be a documentary on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Has it ever come out? I hope so. Damn, it hasn't come out yet. No. No, but we, yeah. Like, I don't know how much I could talk about that. Yeah, okay. That's okay. definitely. That has to come it out. It exists. Yeah. That exists. Yeah. That was filmed. Yeah, yeah, okay. everything. Jay Cole did something similar to that, right? Didn't he do that one time where he just invited a bunch of producers to, uh, like, a, a Maybe week? for the Dreamville sessions? Oh, yeah, the, yeah, that, yeah, for yeah, that. for the collab album. Oh, yeah, that video's crazy. Yeah. 
that it's yeah. like a 30 minute long i love artists that do that man just give, yeah. give people a shot you know yeah and then when you said that oh man i heard some of these like industry producers beats and i'm like man all right this, i got this this is easy you you know perception is everything bro yes. yes and and i think people have like not i'm not hating on industry producers man no, no, listen no. i'm not hating on them there's they're, they're talented they're mm -hmm. but a lot of their talent has to do with their like brand equity mm -hmm. it's not the sound it's the brand equity well, that's a talent in itself that's a talent like they built a great brand for themselves that's a talent i gotta work on yeah that's, you know, for sure it. and that's something they maybe do better than the internet guys right yeah. they've been able to like leverage their music careers into like bigger brand opportunities yeah. you know what i mean yeah but when it comes down to the music because i'll tell you some of these celebrity guys came to beat stars before and said hey i want to sell beats on beat stars i want to see what happens and you know i'll sell under an alias or i'll sell you know mm -hmm. and they try to like out they, they try to price their beats really high because they want to leverage their brand name mm -hmm. and stuff like that and a lot of times they, they couldn't compete with the internet guys bro mm -hmm. they yeah. couldn't they couldn't like the internet the internet wins all the time. Yeah. When you put millions or hundreds of thousands of people in a room and you're saying, go compete with the best of the best, the young, like what you guys do on, on, on the software at such a young age, like, man, the way you guys manipulate things now, like, I'm sorry, like <laughs> is you guys are a problem. Yeah. Like you guys ain't going away yeah. and it's showing now. It's showing now from an industry perspective. Like you, you talk to Greg Mateo, right? I want to talk okay. about your relationship with him too. Yeah. But you, you know, you talk about like BeatStars publishing and kind of like the the, st the every, every week the, the placements that are coming out, like the, the yeah. stuff that you guys are producing, like. You guys are powering the whole fucking internet, bro. Like, there's like some some weeks it's like number ones in five different countries at the yeah. same time. I'm like, what? The if, fuck? if there's an album out every single week, it's gonna be on the B Stars publishing post. <laughs> yeah. That post is basically New Music Friday. Like For every real. single thing is there. Every For single thing. And time. it's not not to say that it came from the platform. It's just you guys are the the talent that's spreading your music in multiple different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, in a way where you, like where it was put together like in a rust situation where it's mm -hmm. like okay we're going we're gonna we're gonna go in and, or or it was licensed online or there's there's no rules there's no yeah. rules how the collaborate at exactly. the end of the day the 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 core factor is you guys in mm -hmm. the music that you make mm -hmm. and it's so good that it spreads in ways that you guys don't even understand sometimes you don't even yeah. like you don't even know sometimes 100%. you don't even know who's listening to your beat sometimes yes. you have no clue yeah, I've, I've. You have no clue. DMs There's some big from, dogs listening to your beats. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I, had, I, had a, I had a, a couple years ago. I had a freaking. It, I had a DM like randomly on a uh -huh. Tuesday morning. I got a DM from Tyga. Uh, it was just a YouTube link. This beat had been released. It hadn't even been released for a week. It had less than like five thousand views. Right. This hard, send a pack. Like mm. that. That was the day where I was like, oh, "Okay, you never know who's listening." And like, I can't tell you how no many different clue. stories you about no all, clue. all the placements that came from that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Come on, these artists know. are savvy, bro. They're smart. They're not gonna wait for A and R's to send them beats, bro. Come on, yeah. come on, dog. Really? We live in that world. You really <laughs> think artists are waiting around for A and R's to send them beats? Yeah. I'm no, sorry, I mean, dog. I'm sorry. If you're an artist and you're savvy and you're making it in the game independently or even on a major label mm -hmm. like and you're still relevant year year after year year after year i'm sorry you're not you're not waiting around for for another human being to all. send you beats i'm sorry you're not doing not it all. you're gonna go find your sound you're gonna go f the internet is open my dog yeah. the internet is open it's not Build closed relationship you know what i mean direct <laughs> like, like, <laughs> that's a lot of the times honestly like to this day i don't even think i've had one placement from an a and r they've all came from like the artist <laughs> reaching out directly myself like, uh yeah of course you know Respect to A&R. Respect to A&R, but... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, right? If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Exactly. I, you know? I think there's yeah, there's a lot of middleman thing going on that, like, I think just understanding that you never know who's... And honestly, if you are, like, low-key, it might be better for you than because a lot of the times artists want, like, beats that nobody knows about. They'll be in the trenches going through the new and, like whatever has like a lot like little amount of plays so yeah. i can get like nobody has this you know you really 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 never know who's listening you know i, I feel like I, you know greg is here he's in the room somewhere and i feel like he should he should have a seat because should. he's the way he talks about you and the way he like advocates for you mm -hmm. like it's been it's been crazy and to have someone like him on your side yeah it's, it's so dope to watch because yeah. That dude, that dude will fight for you for for real. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And just explain a little bit about like 
what Man. Greg at Beat Stars his his, uh, his I think I owe a lot of. You were asking me earlier about how did I avoid getting caught into some bad situations. A lot of it was because of Greg and because of the fact that when I had certain questions, Greg was just there. Greg found me early and was just any any questions I had, anything I needed, just he was there. Always, always answering a text, always answering a call, like just whatever I need. I can't thank that man enough to this day for the things that he does and like the fact that he's always looked out for me and like, I want to do this. Well, here's how you should go about it or yeah. whatever. I have a problem with these people. All right, I'll go talk to them for you. Right. And right. He just gets things done, man. That's it's amazing. I can't speak highly enough about how much he's looked out for me and everything. I owe, I owe a lot to that man. Hell yeah. No, nah, man. Greg's an amazing dude. I have yeah. a lot of history with that guy too. We've been working together for shit. 16 years, I think, yeah. or something like that. You know? That's my guy, man. Yeah. We were talking about just like longevity, you know, yeah. and this like, feeling of just you in this self competition mode with yourself mm -hmm. to kind of keep going, you know, and not a lot of people have that, you know, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've seen, I've been doing this shit for so long, dude. I've seen producers dominate beat stars for a year or two mm -hmm. and then just disappear. Yeah. They lose the love for it. Domin yeah. I'm talking about dominate like hundreds of thousands of dollars a Crazy. year making money and then just wither away or they get, industry folks in their ear and then they get turned turned away from their online business that they built mm -hmm. and you know yeah they forget about like that and then they come back years later and say man that's one of the biggest regrets of my life yeah. it's like giving up my own independent business for 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 people for dreams that people were trying yeah. to sell me you know yeah. and um and then you know we just from the creative part staying keeping yourself in a relevant place to feed mm -hmm. you know your business at the end of the day it's still a business bro i yeah. understand like we love music we love making music and all that kind of good stuff but that's at the end of the day you're trying to you know make sure your customers are fed with mm -hmm. you know the best product the best best quality mm -hmm. music diversity in your music mm -hmm. and i always wondered like you've been doing this successfully now for a few years man you've been mm -hmm. killing it you're one of the top selling guys on the platform you've got beats that have gone crazy viral on youtube and like what what keeps what keeps you going year after year and not like just getting drunk on the success in a way you know um i think first off i feel like i i don't see my success like i feel like i haven't even started yet which is like i think that's a big part of it is that the goals i have and the aspirations i have are so high that i feel like i haven't even broken surface yet and to like certain degrees yes but like i i think it's really the people i look up to the multi hyphenists the, the kanye's and the childish gambinos of, and the tylers of the world if that's the bar for me like there's so much to be done right mm. and i think it's just uh everlasting curiosity and love for what i do i think you have to be crazy to do art and music in general for as long as you, like if you don't love it you're not gonna find that motivation outside of yourself i think and i i think just like those levels and like the longevity every single person i just talked about has evolved over their careers every single time i think a lot of the times i like to look at myself as a, a fan of myself like yeah. how do i keep myself excited how do i like and whether that's dropping an album with mm -hmm. an artist who we had a song who copped it off of beat stars mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. went up hey let's do an album together oh. we yeah. did a whole thing now i i have uh reached a hundred thousand monthly listeners on spotify Amazing, just dude. for making a collab you know what i'm saying yeah. and so that's that a, by the way that's the an underrated like that's an underrated thing yeah. you know like where producers are not really jumping in the ring from like an executive role or like a label role mm -hmm. where they can really like you know, really help an artist that's coming up, really give them their sound, be a part of their career trajectory, help them succeed, and at the same time, kind of be part of it on the business side too. So yeah. it's like, not a lot of producers take that leap, and I'm I'm really happy that you're you're doing that because it's it's really important. It's important for those artists. They need resources. Yeah. They need help. You know. Yeah, I think um, a big part of that was um, I founded a label officially this year, Godspeed mm -hmm. Music. Um, but it was in the works for a while. And the whole point of that was to create a place where people who are fans of my music could 
all flock to and mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. there be, became like whoever's a fan of my sound there's like this consistency with albums dropping over the like you can go to this place and there will be music from like-minded people that you know that because of the reputation i have built uh you know it's going to be good and so i think for me constant evolution is such a big important thing for me especially because things move so fast on the internet i think it's so important to just always be leveling up and always be moving so i think a big part of it is i understand where i'm trying to go and so for me to bridge the gap is just i can scale that down to what i have to do this month this day yeah you know and so i think a big part of that's figuring out what do you want to do like there's so many parking spots you can have in the industry and like different ways you can go and i I think if you figure out where you're going just bridge the gap that's it and so we didn't we didn't really talk about like a real this like it's a real life topic where you know every successful person have they have to make they have to create sacrifices in their life and 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 you know a lot of times you know the people we love sometimes yeah gets get sacrificed in the journey it's sad you know like even for me to be in the position that I'm in, I've had to sacrifice a lot, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, time with my kids, family, yeah. you know, just being obsessed mm-hmm. about trying to build the greatest music company in the world. Like, that's that's my obsession. Yeah. Like, when you do it for 16 years, you're like, you said, you're like, I'm looking at this. I'm creating the bar here. I'm creating the bar here. I'm creating all these goals. And for every year, for me, it's when I jump on the court, I'm, I, I, I want to build the biggest global music platform that helps music independent music creators all around the world i'm and i and every day i wake up and i tell myself you you haven't started yet yeah like you're not you're not even goes away then (laughs) yeah you're not close like you know so i'll I'll get messages in our team channels like oh we hit this accolade we hit the i I don't care yeah what's next it's in the past now yeah you know what i mean and that's how i i kind of keep myself going what was there any anything that you can point to in terms of like sacrifice that you've learn from in a way where to, to achieve your goals or anything that you regret about the sacrifices that you had to make um, to achieve this? I don't know if I would say I'm not a really huge believer in regret because mm-hmm. yeah. that's where lessons come from. Yeah. But yeah. for sure, I would tell you when I was in college and trying to run beat stars up from zero subscribers, zero followers, everything, my day was wake up at six in the morning, drive to college, to school. It was a 45 minute drive listen to samples on the way, not make beats in class. I don't recommend this. Don't do that. But like go to work, go to the gym. I wouldn't have time for music till nine at night. For me, the option is I'm either doing this or nobody else is going to do this for me. Like this doesn't exist if I'm not going after it. So I think my, I just wanted this so bad that like none, I just didn't even see anything else. And I think after a while you get to certain positions to where, This is a huge thing I went through last year where I understood that like the level of sacrifices I was making and things I was doing at certain points may not serve the next chapter you got to go to. Like you may need to reformulate and do things in a different way because it might have worked this way to lock in for this many hours and like do this type of way. But now you, okay, but there you hit a ceiling. Now you got to do it all over again and then do it all over again. Once you like, it's that constant evolution of like hitting that benchmark and Doing it all over again. Like for me, coming from that small town, all I ever wanted was to make music for a living and live in LA. Technically, I'm just playing with house money at this point. Like, yeah, yeah. so when I got there, I was like, well, what do I do? That was a whole thing I had to go through. It was like, damn. Like, it, I, right. it, it was almost me. Like, I didn't even know this could like happen. Right. Like, so like it happened and I was like, mm-hmm. what's next? Okay, what's next? And that was a yeah. whole thing that I had to do. But like me, the day, the way I was living my days up until that point for the next had to change. Yeah. And so I think looking back on the sacrifices, I would say, what are you sacrificing and why? Because mm. this is a huge thing for placements and like sessions and stuff like that. Like a lot of the times I wasn't making things I was happy with and I wasn't producing things for myself. So my days were becoming means to an end. So my life was becoming a means to an end. And when every day is a means to an end because you're just focused on, the, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's, mm-hmm obviously easier is done and said in practice but after right. the end of it i i was like i don't want to be doing this why am i doing this right. i had to go through it to, to learn so i think just like understanding why you're sacrificing and um under everybody says the journey is the 
the way, but like the analogy I always drop is like when you finish GTA five and you have all the money, it's not fun anymore. You don't play it anymore. You play the game to play the game. Right. Right. So I think just it's it's hard to accept that, but just like ask yourself what you're sacrificing for and like where you're trying to go and look around the way. Like it's it's I would say what what I regret is sometimes it's like not going to that birthday party or going out to hang out with that friend because there was times when I got to this place and then like, okay, now I have nobody to share it with. Or like now, you know, there's still life at the end of the day. So I think just if you understand why you're sacrificing for it, it's like, no, because I'm going to do that. Like that balance is something I'm still pretty bad at, but Mm -hmm. trying to learn it. You know, I think, and I think it came with some of the success too. Yeah. Get better over time. Just focusing on, one day at a time and comes with journey. age i feel like comes with age maturity yeah, maturity, yeah. It, it only happened through yeah going through i would just say just throw yourself into it just take off the pressure just learn the hard way yeah, yeah. well bro it was it's been an honor sitting with you learning yeah, learning learning with you hearing your story likewise. like we met a few times but you know getting to really understand jacob really understand pilot yeah. kid like <laughs> um your journey is really inspiring you're such an intellectual dude you're like i honestly couldn't tell you where the ceiling is for you because mm-hmm. um you know where you're going and i don't think anyone's gonna stop you <laughs> it <means laughs> to a get lot, there man. Blessing. and so Appreciate it's you. been an honor like to just watch watch that journey and and be a part of it and um we're blessed to have you in this community so, bro Appreciate and, you. Likewise. And thank you for being on this podcast none bro. of this happens without beat stars bro the, everything i said none of this happens without beat stars oh, so the music first you know music first your drive your dedication your gratitude and um it's so well deserved you deserve it all appreciate so that, appreciate man. you man Love. do you have any last words for the community out there um no follow me on instagram pilot kid underscore um got a lot of albums dropping this year uh yeah focus on the journey that's it Let's enjoy go. it but that's it another episode of pay the creators with a batch on here at beat stars with pilot kid legend young legend and um Keep in touch with this guy and, and watch watch his journey continue to unfold in amazing ways. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace. Peace.